It's spooky season. And with spooky season comes pumpkin beers. Every October, my sister and her husband have orchestrated this weekend of fall time stuff that entails pumpkin carving and corn mazes and apple orchards and the whole nine yards. And part of that every year has included some form of pumpkin beers. Pumpkin beers are kind of an, an enigma in the alcohol industry. They are very hyped now. They're also a very, you know, new development as consumerism has sort of become part of the fall season just inherently. But I choose to look at it in the most positive light. We do get some weird eclectic flavors out of it and can now have these nostalgic ties to you know, very unique and distinctly fall time flavors. So now even though it is kind of this weird gimmicky thing that I really only feel like drinking for, I don't know, maybe a month or two, if that, it's still a fun thing to partake in and I always look forward to it even if objectively it might not be my favorite style of brewing. The, the beers that come out of it are so distinct that I have these very positive memories tied to these very distinct flavors. It kind of relates back to what I talked about in the Oktoberfest video of smells and flavors tying to nostalgia. Enough talking about them, let's go drink some. All right, let's taste some pumpkin beers. So up first we have Night Owl from Elysian. On the nose I get a lot of clove and cinnamon and nutmeg, lots of fall time spices. The palate has a lot of pumpkin pie, maybe some mild bitter sweetness, medium mouthfeel, medium light. And then the, the finish is a little more bitter and maybe some of the like allspice. It's a classic classic fall flavors, classic pumpkin beer. It's like pumpkin pie if it was beer. It's very good. Next we've got the Great Pumpkin from Elysian as well. And this bad boy is an Imperial Pumpkin Ale, so it clocks in at a hefty 8.4%. So I anticipate some of that to come through uh, in the beer itself. On the nose, I got a lot of um, pumpkin, but not just the pumpkin itself. It's like pumpkin seeds as well. Um, I believe they use pumpkin seeds in this brewing recipe, so that would make sense. There's also some some clove, but it's not, uh, none, none of the, the spices are as, as present as they are in the night owl. The palate is uh, roasty, malty, sweet. The mouth feels it's a heavier body and the, the finish is very alcohol forward, which we can kind of expect considering uh, its percentage. It's a unique take on pumpkin beer. I don't see a lot of pumpkin seed being utilized uh, in, in pumpkin beer. So uh, this is kind of fun. Up next, we've got the Punkachino. This was the first pumpkin beer I ever had. As a coffee person first, uh, my sister brought me uh, a bottle of this with her then boyfriend, now husband, um, back when we were still in college and uh, we, we shared it and watched Game of Thrones. And uh, so it, it has a fond place in my heart. On the nose, it is like kind of that like dark roasted coffee, like the pumpkin sort of takes a back seat compared to the other ones we've had so far and definitely gonna be different than the ones uh, we try in a second. Yeah, the the palate, you know, when, when you think of pumpkin and coffee, your head normally goes to like the, the pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks or their new pumpkin cream cold brew. Um, but this is less that and more like you brewed a pot of like just plain dark coffee and used pumpkin spice creamer in it. <laughs> the mouthfeel is pretty round. It's, you know, kind of classic heavier body coffee profile. The finish is a, a little lighter considering the intensity of the aroma and, and the flavor. It's, it's like lots of coffee beers. 
uh, but with a nice fall time twist. I don't want you to think that I don't like it, because I do, but it's probably because of nostalgia more so than, than me actually enjoying the flavors themselves. So up next we have the Dark of the Moon, and it is the last one of the Elysian beers we're gonna taste today. The aroma is smoky, first and foremost, and it kind of takes me back to the, the Bighorn Mountains where I used to work at this camp, and we'd do campfires all the time. It's that campfire smokiness um, paired with, I mean, the cool temperature just gives me uh, like a, a cold night uh, and a campfire. The palette is kind of like a, a charred pumpkin rind, like, like you put a pumpkin in the oven just by itself and cooked it for a really long time <laughs> in a good way. The mouth feels like syrupy, kind of cloying, but not overtly so or aggressively so. And then the finish is, is kind of like Baker's chocolate, uh, got that bitterness, and then the smoke is still present. Um, so, I mean, kind of just in, as a general take, it, it tastes like the outdoors in fall time. All right, on to Rogue and their Pumpkin Patch Ale, which uh, uses hand-roasted pumpkins, which I'm pretty excited about. So the aroma is uh, sweet, there's some coffee notes, kind of light and medium roast sort of profiles. Maybe some nutmeg. The palate is light and sweet and like a malt toastiness. Medium light mouthfeel. And then on the finish, it's kind of this pastry vibe, um, which I attribute to the maltiness. Um, but this is, this is kind of like you know, a, a, a pumpkin spice scone or very pumpkin pie-esque, but like more light pastry and less, you know, heavy pumpkin pie. More. Less Thanksgiving dinner, more breakfast in a cafe. Just generally, it tastes very high quality. Um, like, you, you know, you can tell what ingredients went into it, which is pretty awesome. Up next, we have Upslope's Pumpkin Ale. I used to love this beer, but next to all of these, on the nose, there's not a lot going on. Maybe like some, some mild pumpkin pie, like the neighbor baked one yesterday and left the window open. The palate has some cane sugar sweetness and allspice. That's kind of the predominant spice notes I'm picking up on. Um, it's a medium mouth feel. But then on the finish, um, it, the flavors all kind of marry together and then it just works, uh, which is pretty rad. I, I would consider this one like a good sipper if you're at like a, a party or something, like pick up a pack of this and you're gonna have a good time. Lastly, we've got New Belgium and Voodoo Rangers Atomic Pumpkin, which I am always excited for. It is a very different take compared to the traditional heavier pumpkin beers. It's a little bit lighter, and more importantly, it's actually spicy. You know, they, they take pumpkin spice and interpret that phrase differently, uh, which I really dig. Um, so let's hop in on this year's release. So the nose is, is light, kind of like a golden ale. It's unassuming. Uh, it's almost refreshing. Hay straw farmy vibes. Those uh, golden ale flavors, you know, kind of carry through it, keeping it light and fresh and not like overtly malty or anything. Um, but then there's just this cinnamon and habanero punch uh, to the face that's really awesome. Like a sweet and spicy kick. It's really, really interesting, uh, but it's not so hot that you're gonna like die. It's, it's just, I don't know, a very, very unique, very awesome take, and I, I really love it. It's kind of a medium light body. Yeah, that, that cinnamon and spice sort of fight for the finish, um, and uh, I, I would say that the, the cinnamon 
kind of hangs onto the front of your palate and the, the spice kind of takes over at the back of your throat. Um, and it's like they're fighting and then they go to their separate corners of the room until they're, you know, over it. Uh, but it's, it's a super awesome, super fun beer and I always look forward to picking up a, a six pack. Lastly, we have a secret surprise cameo from Bud Light. Uh, but not beer, it is Bud Light's Pumpkin Spice Seltzer. Bud Light is an enigma, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to seltzers. Uh, a lot of what they try should not work, um, and I guess arguably doesn't, but the, the what does work is they get idiots like me to buy a 12 pack just so I can say, Hey, I tried it. It was eh. So yeah, let's uh, let's hop in here and see what we can find. So the nose is is just sickly sweet. Maybe a little like buttery, uh, which is kind of weird. On the on the palate, it's it's like. There is some like pie crust flavors, some almost seasoning-esque flavors, um, and, and that butteriness sort of coming through. Um, it's a really heavy mouthfeel and at an egregiously like stevia finish, uh, which is, that's, that's kind of been my, my qualm with Bud Light Seltzer's seasonal releases is they make them too sweet um they make them like aggressively sickly sweet and syrupy which is not like i don't know not what i want when i go for a seltzer i i, I generally want something that's you know like a seltzer just with some flavor you know like a Lacroix. you know i guess different strokes for different folks it tastes like an alien's approximation of what a pumpkin pie would taste like as a clear liquid. At this point, these have kind of not come up to room temperature, but they, they have definitely warmed up a bit. And so maybe it was a mistake to do this one last, but also I like that I drank those be before I drank this. Um, I, I don't know. I think it'd be really good cold um and less sweet like if they just dialed back the, the stevia added and you know you you had it really crispy cold it'd be a fun drink to to go to a party with uh and just be like check out this seltzer i got but it's not i don't know it's it's not for just sipping while you're you know enjoying the evening on your porch <laughs> it's definitely not for that <laughs> but whatever you know it 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 works there's there's a time and a place for it it's not uh the time and place that i would uh, attribute to any of these <laughs> but it works uh in a weird way but i don't know it's interesting so speaking of this bud light seltzer I am going to set it up over here and uh, I'm going to have my wife come down and do a tasting, but I am going to tell her that this is uh, the palate cleansing sparkling water uh, that I've been sipping in between these. Uh, and I just, I, I think it's going to be funny. Do I get to know what they are? Um, I, I, if you want to know what they are, but they're, I mean, they're all pumpkin beer, so. <laughs> the cup over there is a little sparkling water to like go in between for And also for chocolate. Between. You want one candy bar in between each no, one of these? Die. Yeah. You'd be an M&M. That's fair. Do them in whatever order you want. Worst. <laughs> what is this? 
That would be. It's one of those seltzers. That would be Bud yeah. Light's pumpkin spice <laughs> seltzer. <laughs> so gross. That's like. It tastes like Fireball's lame cousin. Just, <laughs> they just tried their best and. <laughs> so yucky. You're so mean. Can you imagine Naughty. if that was just another seltzer? <laughs> you just got me twice. And have I tried any of these besides the atomic pumpkin? Um, maybe. That one's like, yeah, it's a pumpkin beer. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how I described it. Well, that's what I would name it. Yeah, it's a pumpkin beer. Cool. That one makes me feel things back here. Oh my gosh, my like vein is like <laughs> throbbing in my neck. Yeah, that one is uh, eight point four percent. I don't really like it. It's a lot. I have a feeling I'm not gonna like these very much because they're darker. Yeah, but you like coffee. That's true. Are they coming from Wow, are they coffee beers? <laughs> that one is. That one does taste like coffee. It's pretty it's, good, actually. Yeah. This one smells like brown sugar. Yeah, hey, you're or right. Or molasses. Oh, brown sugar and molasses sweetness. Look at her. I don't like it. It's not good. It's too much. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be malty and malty. I don't like it. It's malty in a pastry way. When are pastries ever malty? There's like a toastiness, like a pumpkin scone or something like that. I do not like it. <laughs> I've had this one. Question mark? Um, I think the chocolate is throwing me. Hang on. Yeah, the chocolate is throwing <laughs> off your palate. I just feel like it isn't good. <laughs> I do like atomic pumpkin. Yeah. I think I just like the spicy. <laughs> I feel very full. <laughs> This one is okay. You turned around on it? Yeah, the other ones weren't great. <laughs> By comparison, I mean, they all weren't great in my opinion. If I was rating like beers or just like alcohol, I think all of them would be very <laughs> low because I'm not a pumpkin beer person. So you are a pumpkin spice latte person. I am. I'm a everything else pumpkin. Mm. This one's not bad. I would drink a whole one of these. It's almost like a cider. That's what it tastes like. Mm. I, I said it tastes like just if a pumpkin pie was a beer. Yeah, I like it. All right. Well, thanks for coming and doing a tasting. I hope you had fun watching us taste pumpkin beers. The Bud Light Seltzers that made a surprise cameo. I almost think they deserve their own video let me know if i should do a bud light fall flannel seltzer pack review and i will begrudgingly subject myself to a flight of those beverages <laughs> i hope you enjoyed watching us sample those pumpkin beers if any of them sounded good to you try to find them in your area these ones are more readily available than the Oktoberfest beers, although the Elysian pack tends to sell out pretty quick. The good news is, November, they generally tend to run a lot of discounts on pumpkin beer, and I maintain you can enjoy pumpkin and pumpkin flavors well into November all the way up to Thanksgiving. I don't have any drinks with me right now to cheers with, but a proverbial toast and cheers to you, my friends. Go enjoy some pumpkin beers or whatever you want. Anyways, we'll see you next week for hop tea. Well, that was gross. I think you uh, started it off wrong. Can <laughs> we drink the seltzer? But it was funny. Ugh. Nice. Thank you.